You're looking very well today. I've got another story for you, but I'd like to tell it to all of your friends at once. An old lady like me has to say the voice, you know. Oh, you still want to talk with me? How incredibly sweet of you. Say, you'll never guess who I saw today. Captain Scarlet. She was robbing my retirement home with a few other brigands, and I recognized her from her wanted poster, and I said, Oh, hey, you fought the Vault Hunter, didn't you? And she bowed all elegantly and said something like, Indeed, I did, madam, and said that you were really good at fighting and that you beat her fair and square. She didn't seem to harbor much of a grudge about it. Nice girl. You should think about meeting up with her again if you're not shacked up with anybody, you know? I mean, of course, you probably are. <laughs> Gorgeous hunk of a vault hunter like you. I bet you're beating away suitors left and right. Look, you're blushing. Oh, I could just eat you up. <laughs> Mr. Torg was so scared of trying to get a date for such a long time. He used to go to parties in high school and just stand in the back without talking to anybody. I am an introvert! I tried to tell him, I said, don't worry about chasing love. If you chase your dreams, then love will follow. See, that's the thing people don't get. You watch Echo films and they're just awful. They teach you that the only way to be with someone is just to pursue them over and over until they decide they like you. In reality, you know when you like someone almost immediately. You can't really convince somebody to fall in love with you. You just look like a stalker. But if you do things that you're interested in, like making guns that explode or killing mercenaries, then people will see that confidence and skill you have and they'll be attracted to it. But there's always a fine line between that kind of confidence and narcissism, you know? There's nothing worse than somebody who wants to be famous. I remember when Mr. Torg first sold his weapons tech to that board of directors, he was pretty egocentric for a while taking pictures of himself and posting them to the Echo Net all the time, trying to hobnob with every celebrity that used his weapons. He came back home one day with a supermodel under each arm, and I said, Mr. Torg, what are you doing? You've lost sight of who you are. It's been weeks since you actually created a new gun, I said. And it was true. He'd been more obsessed with being well-known for doing something great than with actually doing something great. It was a dark point in my life. Thankfully, Hi Five listened to me and got to work on what would eventually become the Kerblaster. You a fan of the Kerblaster? That was always my favorite. That and the Flacker, which I know a lot of people hate. But there's more to combat than just brute efficiency in this old lady's eyes. Style counts for some. And there's nothing quite like filling the air with tiny little explosions. It's like a fireworks show, except the deaths aren't as sad and unexpected. Actually, that reminds me. Now that you're here, I wanted to throw some ideas at you for feedback. I'm a playwright in my spare time, and I'm trying to write a story about an up-and-coming tournament fighter who tries to find love in a gladiatorial arena. And I figure you've got a lot of experience, so your feedback would really be valuable. So the play is called Broken Hearts and Broken Necks. Scene 1. Fade in on an arena just after the Body parts litter the stage. A lone warrior stands in the middle of the stage. A spotlight illuminating her bloodstained arm. She's holding her sword triumphantly aloft. Back. Is there no warrior who can challenge me? Must I be destined to spend my life as the strongest, the bravest, the most invincible warrior this galaxy has seen? For I am Valkyrie! Scourge of the Gladiatorial Games! From stage left, a janitor with a heavy heart and an even heavier conscience. He begins sweeping the body parts into a pen, which is colored green, and remember that because that's some very colorful color, until melancholy overtakes him. He drops his brush pro to the floor and falls to his knees before delivering a heart-wrenching soliloquy. The blood cannot be washed away. Not before and not now. Even as I attempt to escape the past, which haunts me still. Must I live forever as a fraud, sweeping up the trash of others to hide my shame and avoid my pursuers? Must I forever remain on the periphery of joyful combat? 
ever watchful but never participating. The latter Valkyrie re-enters the stage right. Good morrow, lowly janitor. I heard a noise and thought it worth investigating. Oh, great father. It was nothing but the wails of the souls you released from their bodies tonight. Souls that wail in agony as they fly upward to the hollow. Fools! What have they to wail about? Their agonies are over, ended at the point of my sword. Mine, however, have only yet begun. For it is lonely at the top, and an unchallenged eye is a boring No doubt, Miss If only I were able to tell her my true identity, I would give her a fight she would not soon forget. Yes, ma'am, boredom is the true tragedy. May you one day find challenge in combat. Stupid, Noda picks up a giant two-armed bastard sword with almost no effort. Valkyrie is What is this? Excellent. Stage left. Valkyrie. What strength this janitor possessed? Who is he to pick up a bastard sword with two fingers? What hidden power does he hold? What secrets does he keep? I will endeavor to uncover his past in the hopes that our swords may cross in battle! Excellent. Excellent. Scene two. The interior of the governor's house. The table is set near your teas and biscuits. Oh, I'm so sorry. I didn't even ask you for the feedback on the first scene. Did you like it? Wonderful, I'll continue. Scene two. The governess enters from stage left. Governess. I refuse to respond to these absurd accusations. Her husband looks at her quizzically. Governor. And what accusations may those be? Governess. Actually, you know what? I don't think I'm ready to get feedback on the play yet. But what about you? What are you up to? Tell Grandma Flexington all about it. I bet you've had some amazing adventures. Mr. Tord told me about the time you all played bunkers and badasses together. He said it was one of the most fun and welcoming experiences of his life. Grandpa! You're embarrassing me! Sorry, sweetie, but really, you and the Vault Hunters are his first real pals. It wasn't easy for Mr. Tord to make friends at school when he had facial hair at age eight, pecs at eight and a half, and dead parents by age nine. People found him intimidating. But I told him that he should be thankful for the fact that he looks different. Anyone who wouldn't be friends with you based on appearance wouldn't be a very the good friend anyway. The respect silence. But he really does to like treasure the moments of inaction of so that combat Most could be even more invigorating. To to pose for now I truly understand. Something up by they didn't know what the hell they were talking about. It's not about. often he gets to sit down and play games with people. Oh, speaking of games, did you play Going Back to the House yet? It's a new echo simulation about exploring a log cabin you lived in when you were a kid. There's no violence or anything. You just walk around looking at cereal boxes and remembering people you made out with. <laughs> I really like where echo sims have gone in the past few years, don't you? There seem to be a lot more of them with interesting things to do beyond shooting people. And the writing has gotten so tight in size. For instance, did you ever play the Samurai's Marker? The whole game's story was delivered through haiku. Did Zero write it or something? <laughs> no, I'm just joshing. I know you're too busy for that. But oh yeah, I was playing at the end of the pointed gun last night on my Echo Sim player, and wow, it's, it's, it's about a guy who punches people and smacks himself in the face with doors. <laughs> Easily one of the best punch-related comedy sims ever. But oh, I'm really looking forward to this game called Robot Hunter Assault Squadron, which is this big randomized survival game about throwing bottles at trees and accidentally scaring birds. In the demo version, I scared a bird so hard it died. 10 out of 10 in my book. But what kind of things do you do for fun? You play any sports? You look like you might be into some of the more extreme stuff, like spine hurdling or psycho head volleyball. I knew an athlete a lot like you when I was younger. Her name was Nijo, and she was especially gifted at the giblet toss. That's an old pastime we had back when I was younger. Idea was you punch a convict, and then see how far you can make their viscera fly across a big field. 
You got points based on distance and the size of the viscera. She won the final round of the Giblet Toss Championship I by getting a left eyeball to cross the 300 to meter mark. They said she was juicing with uranium, but I think they were just angry that she dethroned the reigning champ, misogynistic Jim. People really liked him for some reason. Hey, what's your favorite food? My burgers, personally. People look at you like you're a pleb or something when you say you like burgers, but just think of all the things you can do with them. You can change out the patty, play around with the toppings, change what sides you have. You ever have a burger with veggie chips? Gosh, I all but forgot about fries for about a year after I discovered the veggie chip combo. <laughs> and I'm not a vegetarian or anything, but those veggie patties they make on the more upper class worlds are crazy good. Better than real meat if you cook it right. Mr. Toy tried to be vegetarian once after he saw a fluff bear get run over by a truck. How long do you last again? 12 seconds! Barely even finished the word vegetarian before he lunged at a skag chew. I was holding him in my left hand. Nearly lost a finger. Granted, he's always been partial to skag chews or skag bacon. Don't know why, since I always felt like skags tasted like old tires and vomit. But to each his own. Taste is a funny thing. People say your taste buds get more refined as time goes on, but they actually get worse and worse. So when Mr. Torg used to refuse vegetables as a kid, it's because he was actually tasting how awful they were. When we old folks eat vegetables, we're only okay with it because we can't taste all the gross vitamins and stuff. Granted, vitamins are what have kept me going for as long as I've been going. You get enough B12 in your system and you can head but a freight train without so much support. That reminds me, I need to get my pills ready for the rest of the week. I have one of those little metal containers split into different sections for each day. It's really helpful. And the sides are sharp enough that I can use it to ward on burglars if I need to. What else do I have to do this week? Probably head to the bazaar, pick up some frozen spider and flames. Gotta bring my coat, because it gets kind of chilly in the freezer section. What else do I need? Uh, oh, I need Schwartzman's candy drops. Gosh, those are delicious. They're so smooth and sweet. Just thinking about them, I could go for one right now. Couldn't you? Do you think you could go find me one?
fun! Oh, wonderful! Bring it back here and I'll finish my story. Conversation! Me, 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 me,